We're departing on a 30-day passage, starting out in southern Croatia and heading all the way up north to the Istra Peninsula, and then back south again. We're breaking this passage up into three parts or three videos. In this first video, we will share our experiences starting out from our home base marina in Solano all the way up to the city of Pula. This is about a 40 to 45 nautical mile uh, passage. Uh, at this moment, there is absolutely no wind, so we're more sailing. Uh, we hope to get there probably in, in seven hours. Um, in our last video, we mentioned the Korchula Marina is under construction, so uh, there's only limited number of slips, so we're hoping to get one. Um, was there 10? Yeah. Uh, okay, so 10 slips available. <laughs> So we hope to get there early so and grab one of those uh, before we do our next passage which is going to be from Portugal to Bar. And you left out the most important fact, which is I took us out of the marina finally. And who took the boat out this morning? Yeah, baby. And it all went super smooth. The Korchula Marina turned out to be at capacity, so we had to move forward with our plan B, which was to go to Banya, a beautiful bay located about one and a half nautical miles west of Korchula Old Town. This bay is protected from most weather, except strong Bora winds from the north. There is limited anchoring due to the mooring buoys in the bay operated by restaurants and a beach bar. However, no one came over to collect a fee from us this evening, so we were able to stay for free. Next stop on our sailing route up north is the Asi Marina Palmazana. <music> Upon arrival, we immediately noticed more boats were here compared to our last visit just a month ago. This is what it looked like then. Palmazana is a very popular spot for vacationers on charter boats. It's also very famous for some exotic and unusual species. We were very fortunate to be able to spot one. We departed early from the marina this morning for what we hoped to be our first overnight passage headed straight to the city of Pula. But some surprises developed along the way and we unexpectedly ended up at the Coronati Islands.
Today marks day four in our passage up north to northern Adriatic to Istrian Peninsula. Our, we are headed to a city called Pula, which is about 70 nautical miles from where we are right now. Um, we are a little behind schedule due to two things. First of all, is what you guys can see behind me. The wind has been really light and we've been motor sailing for most of the time. A second thing is we were supposed to do a overnight passage yesterday but we basically chickened out and that is due to the fact that about three to four nautical miles west of the big city split uh, we spotted a lot of fishing activity and um, as we were going through the area we saw a lot of fishing pots and fishing nets so that um, uh, Danielle has to come over here and, and at the bow and do the watch so we can go through them, it was almost like a minefield. Knowing that that, um, that night, yesterday night, the winds were going to be calm um, and we know that we were going to be uh, motoring most of the time, we decided not to take the chance. Uh, we woke up the, early this morning, uh, we've been underway probably for the last four, four and a half hours, uh, covered about 20 to 25 nautical miles and I think we have about 10 nautical miles to go for the planned anchorage. Um, if everything goes well, uh, tomorrow morning we're going to do the last leg from the Anchorage to the final destination for this trip, and that is the city of Pula. Well, I actually want to say thank you to all of those fishermen for laying out all the fish traps that scared us and made us abort our overnight plan to Pula. Um, if that didn't happen, we would have never got to see and discover the gorgeous Coronati Islands which I have to say right now are my favorite um, islands and place that we've enjoyed sailing at in Croatia so far. They're so beautiful. They're very isolated and rustic, not a lot of civilization there, um, with just beautiful uh, blue turquoise bays and um, kind of desert-like landscape. In fact, I really wanted to um, stay a little bit longer and enjoy some of the anchorages that that area has to offer. But then we learned they're a national park, which of course those islands should be because they're stunning. But um, here in Croatia, as everything connected to boating is very expensive, the fee for a boat our size is over 600 kunas a night, which is about 100 US dollars. So we made best with our one day there and enjoyed that and then uh, carried on. And uh, while we were there though, um, at the islands we we met some wonderful Croatian sailors and they told us about the anchorage we're in right now which is about a halfway point uh, between the Coronati Islands and Pula so um, if it wasn't for them and their hot tip we wouldn't be at this stunning spot uh, Croatia is just again blowing our minds uh, Kavanch just set the anchor and he jumped in to check it and also take a little swim because it's pretty nice and warm out. And uh, yeah, all looks good. And I think I'm gonna join him right now in the water. attempt we were able to set the anchor so we tested the anchor it was holding well I dove in take a look at it and it was dig deep so I was at ease uh, so this morning we woke up we are going to collect the anchor soon and continue our way uh, to Pula
Well, I had another sleepless night in this beautiful Anchorage. Um, we arrived here around uh, probably 5 or 6 o'clock last evening, um, set the anchor up, I tested the anchor, I dove in, um, took a look at it, she was deep in the sand. So um, I was at ease, uh, but and the anchor is supposed to be uh, protected from easterly wind, which is actually protected from the easterly wind, but what I didn't account for was the westerly swell. So um, the swell that builds up in um, northern Adriatic rolls right into this anchorage and all night long it was it was really rocky so I wasn't able to uh, fall asleep. On the top of that my anchor alarm went twice but I think that happened because I probably let out a little too much chain. So so far so good. Um, the other thing that happened to us in, in this beautiful anchorage I decided to fly my drone and get a good footage. While I was flying my drone I crashed my drone in one of those pine trees back there. Uh, so that was a little bit of an adventure. We hopped into the dinghy and go ashore and um, made our way to that tree and, um, uh, and, and find our drone. It was kind of a difficult find but we did find it and we recovered it. So the drone is back. Uh, I'm not sure it's still working or not uh, but uh, it is with us and hopefully I will test it either today or tomorrow. So. This morning we're gonna collect the anchor and we will head up to another island closer to the, our final destination. It's not the final destination but the destination for this trip is the city of Pula. It's now day six into our passage, and we leave this anchorage behind and sail north to a beautiful bay on Unige Otuk. Good morning. How did you sleep? Morning. Great. I slept great. That's very good news for us. As you guys are probably aware by now, Kavanch... A little bit, a little bit um, anchor anxious at this point. <laughs> yes, that's one of Kavanch's sailing fears, um, which I don't know why he has it, because every time he sets an anchor, it's great. It sits, I'm sleeping perfectly fine. But it's one of those things Kavanch just has to get over in time. But we had a great night. Um, I'm gonna show you this little bay we're at. It's pretty beautiful and peaceful. And this was the busiest anchorage we've had so far on our sailing trip up north. I think we had a total of maybe six boats in here last night. Um, the two previous nights when we were anchoring, it was just ourselves. But um, yeah, I'm really happy Kamancha had some good sleep. We didn't lose a drone. We didn't have lots of rolly, uh, crazy weather like we did the night before, so all good. And we are gonna take off pretty soon here after coffee and head over to the Istra Peninsula. Uh, we're currently at, it's called Union Island in English. Do you remember the name of it? Unie. Unie Otuk is where we're at right now. It's a cool spot. We've collected the anchor and said goodbye to this beautiful bay as we sail across the channel and over to the Istria Peninsula. First stop is the Asi Marina in Palmer. It's been several days now into our passage and the fruit and vegetable hammock is begging to get refilled. There have been no market selling produce at any of the spots we've been at. So we're very excited to get into Palmer because I read there is a small farm very near the Aussie Marina that sells delicious fresh fruit and produce.
days of motor sailing, we are beyond excited to have some yeah. wind in our sails and be re-energized. So, so we are headed to Pula. Uh, we have probably have another um, 10 to 12 nautical miles left. We have a nice wind, 12 to 13 nautical miles on our beam. And that's a really nice feeling right now. The approach to Pula is rather disappointing. A lot of uh, blue architecture and um, shipyards. It looks like a very industrial city. Um, let's see what we find out. miles up north we are finally here this is the city of Pula and we are standing right in the middle of the very ancient amphitheatre and we are the only ones here yeah it's apparently the sixth largest Roman amphitheatre in that the world that is standing yes and yeah it's just Kavanch and I again enjoying Croatia without the crowds and we also have to say uh, we are finding Pula to be a very very charming um, and historical city the entrance, as you just saw, was um, not that appealing with all the industrial stuff going on. So we're back at our boat right now in Pula. We spent the afternoon exploring the city. We uh, hit the Colosseum, which is conveniently right behind me. Hopefully you can see that. And we actually got quite charmed with Pula. It ended up being um, a much more beautiful city than we possibly thought. <laughs> Stepping on 